was listening to, uh, uh, I think it was oh, when shears on the rubber. You just pound, yes, you bounced right. off the rubber sheeting. Wait, I think I already cut this stuff out. Yeah, I did. Hole in the rubber. Can you do it through each of them? No, I don't know what the hole in the rubber is all about. Because those are from ones that I already cut. Huh. Okay. And I don't know what it's all about with the hole in the rubber. I don't have any explanation, but maybe some of those other places will have rubber. Just get my oxygen back up. Ooh, I like the I like go. the jazzy music. Yeah, all the doo, 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 all the songs in this game are nice in their own way. Rubber, got any rubber over here? Rubber, looking for it. Looking for rubber. Howdy, folks. Anybody got any rubber? Oh, oh I think these are rubber. Yep. That's Snip. what it looked like on the other one. Oh, there's another one. There's a bunch, yeah. Might as well just grab as much as you can get. I'm gonna grab the two for now just because I gotta get back because of oxygen. Eventually. Oh, says who? You got the boost now. Yeah. You're boosting like I a need. fiend. Wait, I need eight more medals, right? That's... Oh, Look at that. You just made another... it back with like 20 seconds left. You could have gotten that other rubber. Oh, probably. Yeah, but... Right. Yeah, was convenient to you at all. I've become impatient. I want it done now. You know, you were never like this before. <laughs> before... Impatient, skipping out on rubber. <laughs> I remember a time where you saw rubber and you couldn't you, we, we couldn't keep you away, away <laughs> pull over you. we gotta get that rubber like you happily oblige you I understand that such Listen, damage could horrify you I'm oh, there to support you the only half the cost of a damaged spacesuit in such not a necessarily agency is proud of its loyal attitude the act of harvesting rubber <laughs> I just hey, you might sure need it that you, well, that's neither here nor there, Russ. I'm just worried <laughs> about you. <laughs> got it. Three more. Good, you got good. a hell of a stash of rubber. Oh, no, not anymore. Okay. Sold it. For what? A killing. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't believe what rubber was going for a few years ago. <laughs> You know what's funny? I was thinking about just recently. What's that? I was trying to figure out if I'm funny or not. <laughs> I Okay, I actually, yes, go with this because so, I have some stuff I could say too. I like this. So I w lately I've been trying to think about what I'm good at because I, I truly, I don't know. I, I do not know what I'm actually good at. Okay. I know that there are things that like people have responded well to, but I don't know that I'm necessarily good at it. Mm-hmm. And then I started thinking about you and I as a comedy team. Mm -hmm. Not what we've always done. And I would say back in the day, if you had asked me, I would have said that I'm the funnier one and you're the smarter one. <laughs> Which to I be laugh fair, at the idea of it, but I, I but understand to be where fair, you're coming back, from. But back when we first started, I it was it was because I was the more like like boisterous one. I was I was very outgoing with the comedy, whereas you were a little more reserved. Yeah. And we're always kind of like the straight man. Yes. I, Nowadays, I, <laughs> I was I was thinking like, all right, so if you put me and Russ together, could somebody say who the funnier one was? Granted, comedy's objective, you know, you can't really or subjective, you can't really say who is funnier, this or that. And I think I came to the conclusion: you and I are equally funny, uh -huh. and two totally different styles of funny. I think you are more clever and quick-witted. Oh, thank you. I like, 100%. Because just you saying that one little thing made me think about it. The uh, made it killing. You are 100% more quick-witted than I am. <laughs> well, I, I tell you, the way I think of it is that I'm... I if, if you ask me to come up with something, I would always say you're the funnier one by far. I think most people would. I don't think so. I, well, I think what I'm good at, because I've also thought about this stuff relatively recently. Uh, I don't love that this music is playing under it. I know. Uh, so <laughs> I I think I if you ask me to come up with something funny from zero uh, on the spot, I don't think I could do it. I think I'm neither good. can I. I'm, I'm conversational. 
Yeah, I think I'm good at taking what, taking other people's starting point, and then making it funnier. That's what I do, though. Because I feel like I'm not, the, I feel like I'm not the funniest. Like I, I know comedy pretty well in my head, but I'm not as good at just getting it out there and being the person to deliver the comedy. I'm good. Mm. At, I, I, I think of myself more like a I comedy think you producer. Are, I, I'm not no, saying no, no. I'm incapable, and I, I do think I'm 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 all right. At, I'm at, I'm talking strictly amount. performer. I, I like. I, I don't think you realize how funny you are. Well, a lot of the, I have a lot of. Um, I'm very self-conscious, and I think that my self-consciousness takes away from my ability to be as funny as I could be. I and realized. I, you know what we are? What? We're Spade and Farley. I yeah, I literally had this in my head the other day. I was like, I guess I'm like David Spade, and he's like the Chris Farley. Yeah. And you like, know what? I'll tell no. you why I was thinking of it. Is what? because I think we often over the years should have switched roles. Yes, because it's too typical. It's too expected from us. It yeah, but also at the same time, it's like I was doing a lot of the goofy stuff at times. Oh like yeah, there, yeah, yeah. That's what 100%. I mean. I, where, where like, I'd be the straight man in something and I'd be the one reacting like, what's going on? And we could both do those things. Yeah. But I think that our best usage and what we should do going forward is switch that up. Because I actually, you know what made me think of it was when we were doing the Sam and Max playthrough. And you mentioned me doing like the, the straight man detective, like the serious yeah. one where you'd be the goofy sidekick guy. And I was like, oh shit, that's what we've been doing wrong <laughs> yeah. for a bunch of a bunch of years. It, it, I don't know what it was, but watching Sam and Max, it clicked in my head where I was like, this could totally be us. Mm -hmm. Like not a dog and a fucking rabbit, but like the 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 character tropes of like the gruff, like come on now, Sam. Like that that's one hundred percent you. Yeah, that's and that's where I think when we start shooting stuff again, we should keep that in mind. We just be but like, yeah. which which part here is closer to Sam and which one is be more Max? The, well, yeah, I, I started. I started thinking about like the the comedy thing, so I I do I genuinely believe you are one hundred percent more quick witted than I am. You are sh you are sharper, you are faster to the punchline. Mm -hmm. um, it and uh, m what I am, I'm willing to go that little bit extra further. Wait, and I, make I, it ridiculous. And I think you're also a, a hundred percent better showman. Yeah, and I just well, no, no, I. You have that. I don't say 100% because so if you had asked me 10 years ago, I would have mm -hmm. said yes. But I mean, in the past 10 years, though, mm. I don't think you realize it. That yeah. Oh, by me, doing it, all yeah. the doing all the, the gaming stuff online, your personality has kind of popped a little. Yeah. And you've become I've a gotten little, better with it. For yeah. Sure. You've become a little bit more forward in your delivery of things, like a little more confident in that you're willing to just let it fly you'll yeah. throw out those little things here and there that just back in the day i don't necessarily think you would have been comfortable doing oh yeah i definitely have to be my problem is i have to be comfortable with everybody that's around me yeah I, i've always been the type you throw one person in who i'm not comfortable around and it ruins everything yeah i i will i don't care about that yeah, I wish I did. So, <laughs> I, I, this so is all stuff that in my uh, head. I've, I've like basically given myself therapy, just going through in my head and uh, trying to nail down everything that got me to where I am. And there's plenty. I've there. been doing like, the exact same thing. <laughs> the I past guess this, two months. Does this happen maybe in in, in late thirties? Like, I don't know. You hit that point, are there any other like, 36, 37 year olds out there who are uh, experiencing the same thing we're experiencing, where we're not so much like a midlife crisis, but we're. It's like a midlife assessment. Yeah, midlife self-assessment. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. And it's in it, but it's like it's very geared towards performance, though. Yeah, like just specifically, like I guess you could say like occupational assessment, mm -hmm. maybe. Because I kind, I guess it could fall in line with that. Like you're kind of thinking about like the thing you're doing and why you're doing it and should yeah. you be doing it and how you're going to be doing it in the future. I, I think, yeah, maybe that does happen, because I'm sure, like, it, it, this this is probably the age where if you've been trying to be an actor for years, like, not mm -hmm. just comedy, but, like, any kind of performing, where you go, should I be doing this? Yeah, like, it's, it's, it's the shit or get off the pot moment. Uh, yeah. moment. That apparently happened with, uh, that was a good story I was reading recently, recently about the woman who plays uh, Daniel's wife on Cobra Kai. 
Like, she she had hit that point in her life where she was like, I think acting's just not going to work out. Yeah. And the, whole, the only reason she stayed in for a few more months was because her, her husband was like, well, we need the insurance. So while I look for a new job that has health insurance, just keep acting for, like, another How few months. How lucky was fucking she? I know. Jesus, man. It really worked like out. That, She's like been great on there. Not only did that show... Not only did it pop on, like, YouTube, like, people were talking about it, but the Netflix acquisition. Yeah. And, and set. the That's... first Netflix season was the one where her character actually started becoming, like, yeah. really good. So. Like, like, actually giving her, like, making her a part of the story. Yeah. Um, but you know who, you know, it's funny, you know, I just found out uh, listening to an interview. You know who else had that moment? Who's that? And And later than you would really expect him to. Paul mm. Bettany. So Paul oh, Bettany yeah. had already done first. Uh, he had already done a Knight's Tale. He had done all this stuff. Was this even after? Is this? Did he mention it being around the time of Master and Commander? This was just before Iron Man. Oh, okay. All right. He was. Uh, so I, uh, from what I remember, he was basically like sitting in his car and going like, "This is it. I like the the, the dream is over. I've I've got no money. I'm gonna be." I'm just gonna kind of pack it up and you know rethink my life, and then I think it was like two or three days later, John Favreau called him and was like, "Hey, I need a British asshole to be a computer," and yeah, he was like, like, "Done, sold." And I, for I forgot he how did long he's Iron been Man. around. Yeah, yeah, he did Iron Man, and all he did was the voice. But then all of a sudden, people were like, "Oh right, Paul Bettany's really good." You know what? I think this does relate to because Iron Man was what? 06? 07, no, 08, 09. So it, it was shot oh, wow. in 08, I believe released 09. Because I think he, um, had, he had mentioned one of the things that that depressed him about things was how Master and Commander never took off because he was kind of expected to launch like a franchise. Yeah. And it was a great movie and it got Best Picture nomination. But then that would be about the time where the, the realization was like, yeah, they're not making any more of those because it had been Iron like four Man. or five years. So Iron Man was 2008. Okay. When was... Master what, Commander, I think it was 03 or 04. Yeah, it had to be... It, like, it was around that time. Um, where it is Paul Bettany? Which, by the way, Master and Commander, such a good movie. I actually never got around to watching it. 2003. Yeah, it was surprisingly good. Just I remember I saw it in theaters. It was one of those ones where I was like... I was at my dad's house, and I'm like, well, I've already seen other things I want. Why not? I'll go see this movie they want to watch, because it looked like a stuffy old British thing. I wasn't yeah. sure if I would enjoy it. God damn, it was really, really good. So, oh yeah, so 2001, he did A Knight's Tale. Then um, he did, uh, let me see, a different Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, but with uh, Stellan Skarsgård. And, uh, oh, just something also titled that? Yeah, he did uh, Beautiful Mind, uh, Master Commander, Wimbledon, The Da Vinci Code, and it was in right after Da Vinci Code, where he played the like, one yes, of the villain. Da that's right. Si or one of the villains. He played Silas. The whip it, the guy, the guy that would skate himself. himself. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was right after that that he almost packed it up and left. And then John Favreau called him. Because that Da Vinci Code was 2006 and that's, Iron Man was 2008. I, so I he bet had that's a big the one. Gap in between. I bet that's the one I was thinking of uh, where he, after Da Vinci Code. Because I remember it, remember it was kind of very middling reviews. When it came out, it was yeah. considered kind of a disappointment. Didn't that we might see have been the, the one theater together. Of. Maybe. I think we did. Because I think have. we were both blown away by him and the the he the, was good. The, the whipping himself. Yeah, and I honestly, it, when I think about that movie, I'm like, you know, it was better than I think I gave it credit for at the time. I'd have to watch it again. I honestly, I only remember him. I remember it was weird seeing Tom Hanks in that role. Yeah. But now I think it's been long enough. Like with Nicolas Cage hair. Yeah, it wouldn't weird me out now, I don't think. Um, but hey, you know what? Here. I mean, this has been good. It's, I'm probably going to label this like podcast episode or something like yeah. that. Because this has been good. But what we should go out on today is making the crap in post by the developers. Oh my god, you can do it. Yeah, I made all the stuff. It's actually some crap. Posed by the developers. Okay. I did it. Uh, and put it in your hands. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Uh, you I'll kept it... the hamster? Oh, yeah. I forgot oh, I still Jesus. got the hamster. <laughs> well, I might as well hold on to it. Whoa. 
We've completed the entire oh, upgrade. You got all the experience. Received the title of the great creator. I think you won. Having drained your brain's activity while you were working, your brain was stimulated with small electrical charges to improve your engineering skills. Judging by the result, it uh, can cause a number of hallucinations. However, it was entertaining. You still can't get past the radiation, but I will mark the coordinates of the rest of your motivation. <laughs> okay. Oh. Well, hit myself. So, I hit. I can hit myself. That's good. Hey, concussion. Nice. All right, okay. so, uh, uh, all right, so, all right, put it back in your hands. Cancel. Cancel. And Ooh. get to the evacuation point. 